Now, the move of the uh, permanent multi-purpose module from uh, the Unity, where it is now, to the Tranquility module, where it will be, is the next step in a series of tasks that will leave the International Space Station able to accommodate more visiting vehicles in the coming years. And this morning, we're going to uh, talk about the thinking behind that plan with the uh, station's operations integration manager, Kenny Todd. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Uh, you chaired a mission management team this morning. Is everything still go for the PMM move tomorrow? Everything's in uh, really good shape. Uh, we, uh, over the weekend, got the arm moved uh, to its uh, location in order to accomplish this work, so everything still looks very good. The the, the Canada Arm 2 is the main mover here to, to move this pretty big module from one to another. Is it a, a particularly difficult robotic operation to, to move into that space? Well, um, robotics in general is a little bit complicated. No. Lots of angles, uh, lots of lots of arm movements, uh, individual joint movements, but uh, you know, it's something we know how to do. Um, you know, years ago when we were still flying shuttles, uh, we used to to berth the uh, MPLMs, uh, you know, for several missions, and so we know how to do that. Uh, this particular uh, operation is a little bit complicated because we have some pretty tight clearances, but uh, it's clearances we've we've operated when, w with them before, so uh, very confident that we can get this done successfully. That's the thing that I noticed, too, that moving it into this position on the front side of uh, Tranquility, there's, there's stuff that's close to the back end of it that you usually don't have in these kind of movements. Yeah, no doubt. And in fact, uh, the clearances were so tight that we uh, we had to go in and move some stuff on some previous EVAs just to ensure that we opened up up the clearances that that we felt like we needed in order to uh, to uh, safely accomplish the task. But uh, again, uh, in talking with the robotics folks last week at our our readiness review, uh, they assured me that uh, they have all the clearances they need, and, and in fact, uh, extra margin on what they would typically uh, say is a is a good clearance. And the big question, though, is is why PMM has been in that spot for over four years and doing its job fine. Why do we want to move it to uh, this new location? Well, as a program, uh, once we made the decision that we wanted to uh, to have uh, commercial uh, crew vehicles, uh, we uh, have commercial cargo vehicles, uh, ensuring that we have enough places for, for berthing and, and docking those vehicles is something that became a priority here several years ago. And so we've been, uh, we've been moving forward with this project over the last several years, building some additional hardware to ensure that, that we'll have two uh, ports for berthing uh, commercial crew vehicles. Uh, and also have two ports uh, where we can service uh, cargo vehicles as well. And so that's really what this has been all about. Hey, can you talk us through where those uh, new ports are? Are they, are they places that don't exist now, or we just don't recognize them? You bet. Um, if, you, if you just look at the commercial crew uh, vehicles, uh, at this point what we've got in place is a plan to have um, uh, a commercial vehicle, that can, the crew vehicle that is capable of, of uh, docking at the PMA2 location. That's in order the very front end of the station. Correct, at the very front end of the station. And all we need to do there is we need to attach a, a docking assembly uh, to that PMA2. And so that's what we're going to do uh, when we get SpaceX 7 up here in a, in a few weeks. Uh, it'll bring the hardware that allows us to do that, and we'll do that on a on an EVA, uh, hopefully towards the end of the summer. And that's the thing we we hear referred to as an IDA. Right? Correct, the ISS docking assembly. Uh, that's correct. And and then from there on, it gets a little more creative. Uh, <laughs> when you go to look for that second commercial um, uh, crew vehicle location, what we decided to do was use the uh, the Node 2 Zenith uh, port. Uh, but uh, it wasn't ready for a docking assembly the way it's currently configured. Uh, what we needed to do is we needed to move the pressurized mating adapter number three, which is currently on the starboard side or the port side of node three. We'll need to robotically move that over to the to the node two zenith location, and uh, at that point, then we'll fly up another ISS docking assembly and we will install it on that, that uh, pressurized mating adapter number three, which will be now on uh, on node two zenith. And that and puts the places for commercial crew vehicles on the front and the bottom of node two? On the top. We'll have, it will sorry, be on the top, be on the top of, no, yes, on the, on the zenith side, so we'll have the front and then we'll have the top of node two that we'll be able to put commercial crew vehicles there. Um, and then uh, and then in order to ensure that, uh, that we have two commercial cargo vehicle ports, uh, we, uh, we decided we wanted to open up node one Nader because uh, our backup previously for the commercial cargo 
uh, and HTV and AT or HTV was to use that node 2 zenith location. But since we've now covered it up uh, with a, a commercial uh, crew vehicle location, we needed another commercial cargo vehicle location. And so, so we elected to move the uh, permanent multipurpose module, the PMM, that's currently on node 1 Nader, and, and uh, open up that uh, location in order to have a, a backup location for commercial cargo vehicles. And then still have the node 2 Nader uh, port that is being used for cargo vehicles now. Correct. That's going to continue to be our primary location. Uh, that's the one we're we're most experienced with. Uh, our, our, we know how to operate the arm at that location, and so uh, we're very comfortable with that. Uh, over time, uh, we'll uh, we'll probably get to the point where we're using Node One Nader in the same same fashion. Uh, but uh, but certainly, we'll still have Node Two Nader available to us. So PMM relocation is the first, or actually the next step, because this is a, has been underway uh, for some time. What comes after the PMM relocation, what will we see? Sure. Once uh, once we uh, get the PMM relocated, that really enables us to do quite a bit of work on the inside of station to start to run some vent ventilation lines, uh, some power lines, uh, some data lines, some, some cables that allow us to be able to talk to the to the PMM in its new location. Uh, we'll also be able to do some work down on the Node 1 Nader to, to get it configured to start receiving vehicles, uh, cargo vehicles at that, at that location. So we've got quite a bit to do on the inside. Um, when we get out into the fall, you're going to hear us start talking about moving, moving the pressurized mating adapter number 3 off of the port side of Node 3 and move it over to Node 2 Xena. So that'll be uh, uh, probably the next big robotic operation that we'll do relative to a module. Um, um, probably towards the end of the summer is when we're going to try to get the uh, the docking assembly installed on PMA number two, and at that point, then we'll uh, we will have a port that's available and ready to to uh, service a commercial crew vehicle for whenever they're ready to fly. You bet. L long term, though, this is going to be into next year or, or longer before all of this reconfiguration is done? Well, at this point, uh, you know, we'd like to have all the modules moved uh, by the end of the year. Uh, and uh, if we can get the docking assemblies on, on board, both of them, uh, we would like to have both of those installed as well. So uh, our goal is hopefully by the end of the year to do that. But a lot of that's uh, uh, related to when we can fly flights and get the hardware on board. And so uh, we're... Uh, that, you know that's going to be a limiting factor for us, but certainly by the end of the year, our, our goal is to at least have one of the one of the uh, docking ports up and running. As far as the commercial cargo um, vehicles, uh, we feel like that uh, we'll have Node 2 uh, uh, Nader uh, again. We'll will be operational and ready to go. Node 1 Nader, uh, we're hoping by the fall, will be operational and and ready to accept vehicles at that location as well. I say, and all of this pending the. Uh arrival of some other hardware that's required. Okay. You bet. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, that's, you know, a lot of this hardware is uh, still, still going through its finish up in terms of its building and, and uh, needs to get on a vehicle and get up there. But I think all the, all the right hardware is slotted for the right vehicles. It's just getting them off the ground. Be very exciting to see, see Absolutely. the changes coming. Oh, yeah. It's great. great. Thanks very much. It's my pleasure. International Space Station Inter uh, Operations Integration Manager, Kenny Todd.